how do you generate a standing wave physically in a lab in a place well this is a standing wave right and all you need is one wave going one way and an identical wave moving in the opposite direction right so one possibility would be to have a speaker two speakers one producing sound and pointed that way so that wave wave moves to the right and then you put in front of it another speaker producing sound waves with an opposite direction if the two speakers are connected to the same source right then they're going to be doing exactly the same thing that means the waves produced by the two speakers are going to have the same wavelength if the speakers are identical uh, then they will have the same amplitude so what we just talked about this equation should apply for the resulting wave produced by the two speakers in between the two speakers right Now if I do that, and this is the x-axis, <coughs> and this is the middle point, what would you expect the middle point to be? We know that you're going to get a standing wave. The question is, where is the standing wave? Because it could be that this is a node, but it could be that this is an anti-node. How do we uh, figure out which one is it going to be? If the speakers are producing, if uh, the, the correct word to say is that if they're in phase, that means if the speakers are doing the same thing, right? So you hook them up and they both start going like this at the same time. Not that one starts first and then the other one, but if it do start with the same phase, then let's assume that this one produces a pressure wave with a positive pressure wave here and a positive pressure wave here, and that that wave starts to propagate this way and that pressure wave starts to propagate this way since the waves are identical and they were produced in the same way let me do one blue and the other one red what do you expect the displacement to be in the middle If this wave arrives to the middle, say, telling the medium, move down, the other wave is going to be doing the same thing. If they were produced in this way that I'm saying, if they are producing phase, they're moving the same distance from the speaker to the middle, from the speaker to the middle, they, each one has traveled the same distance, you would expect that when they arrive to this point, they, are, they have the same displacement. Right? I'm not saying they have the same phase, we already uh, talked about that. We saw that the phases are not necessarily the same. The vectors are spinning around. The phasers are spinning around. But let's just look at the, fa at the displacement. If this displacement, because of the red wave, is negative, the blue one is also going to have negative displacement. So that tells you that this point is going to have the displacement, the net displacement at this point is going to be always adding the displacement of one wave with the displacement of the other wave. They're going to be uh, uh, in phase. So, the amplitude at this point is going to be maximum. The, oscilla the oscillator, which would be the molecules of air located in between the two speakers, that oscillator is going to move up and down with maximum amplitude at that point. Because of the symmetry of the situation. Right? The speakers are identical, they're sending waves towards the center. Everything is symmetrical, so what you have on the right, you should have on the left. If that is true, the middle has to be an anti-node. All right? So that point is going to be an anti-node. This is just a picture, right? As time goes on, these this two waves keep moving towards each other. At some point, the two peaks are going to uh, overlap, so that would be the maximum displacement. At some point, one is going to be this way and the other one is going to be that way, so that's when this oscillator here goes through the equilibrium point and so on. But we know that the amplitude is 
going to be maximum at that point. And then if we know that, then we know how far uh, the uh, next antinode is going to be, for example. There should be an antinode to the right of this point, a distance lambda divided by 2, and there should be an antinode to the left of this point, a distance lambda divided by 2, and in between two antinodes you should have a node, right? And so on. So once you identify that the center is an antinode, then uh, then you will have a node here, and a node here, then another antinode here, and this distance should be lambda over 2. But I could have produced a standing wave in a different way. Same speakers, but suppose that now I produce the waves in opposite directions. That means when one speaker is going this way, pushing or uh, producing a pressure wave with positive amplitude on this side, the other speaker might be producing a, a pressure wave with negative amplitude on the other side. So that could also be the case. So suppose that this See if I can draw this right. So when they encounter each other in the middle, if this one, uh, or if this, since distances are the same, if we start the waves with opposite faces, like I said, if one is producing a positive pressure wave and the other one's producing a negative pressure wave, at the instant when you start uh, turn on the speakers, then when those two waves meet each other in the middle, they would have traveled the same distance, so they're going to keep that difference in phase at that point. So when one is doing positive stuff, the other one's doing negative. So that means they cancel each other at that point. And if that is the case, if that's how you set up these speakers, then the midpoint between the two speakers is going to be, this doesn't look very symmetrical, the midpoint is going to be a node. So in that case, you will get a node here. These are two, and of course you can have any situation in between. If you don't start the speakers exactly at the same time, doing the same thing, then you'll have something in between. So in between, you could have something in between node and anti-node, okay? So let's try that. I have two speakers here, and I can produce a wave with this wave generator. Everything's on. I don't know what's going on. Oh, there. So I have the speakers here facing each other, just like in the case that we discussed. And I'm going to change the connections to change the way in which the speakers are oscillating. So they might be in phase or they might be off phase uh, here. So this is only one speaker. I disconnected one of them. So you hear, I don't know which one, one of these, this one. This is two speakers connected in this way. They're in phase. So we're looking at this diagram. And the middle between the two speakers, that point should be an antinode. That means maximum amplitude of the sound wave, right in between. Now the wavelength for the sound produced by the speakers is probably bigger than this. So you're seeing a lot of, I mean, you're seeing only a section here. What's allowed to oscillate is only a section of the whole um, wave profile. 
So what happens when I connect just one, like I said, two in phase, if I flip this, then I get them to do opposite things. I change the phase. Are you immediately notice the difference, right? But it's happening in situation number two over there, where the sound wave produced by one speaker in the middle uh, has, say, some displacement or, or positive pressure, whereas the wave from the other speaker has negative. And it keeps flipping. Of course, that pressure wave goes up, positive and negative, like any traveling wave would do. But they're always opposite. When one is positive, the other one's negative. When the other one's negative, this one's positive, and so on. So they tend to cancel each other at that point. They don't cancel completely. You hear something, several reasons. One of them, probably the main one, is that the speakers are not identical. If the speakers are not identical, then those amplitudes of the two waves are not the same, and complete cancellation is not going to happen if, you, if the two waves don't have uh, identical amplitude, right? But the difference is it's very uh, noticeable. Of phase, in phase. Okay. This is exactly the same uh, principle that is used for noise cancellation uh, headphones. So you have one of these speakers will play the role of um, external sound, right? That would normally go into your ears, right? But this, the other speaker will play the the, the role of the noise cancelling device that you have uh, between the sound and your ears. Right? So this thing will sort of have a microphone, analyze the signal, analyze the sound that is coming from outside, quickly process that, and produce a sound wave that is exactly opposite right? to the one coming in from the outside. So that it cancels, not perfectly, but like in this case, there will be a significant uh, reduction in the, in the amplitude of the resulting wave. So that's the same idea. Of course, in the case when uh, when they're even canceling each other, if I open it up, then you can hear the sound a lot better, right? That's not that case anymore. We'll discuss this case. Also, there will be some cancellations, inter uh, destructive and constructive interferences happening even in a two-dimensional situation where the wave of this and the wave of that one are propagating towards you. And there will be some points where there is um, destructive interference and constructive interference. It won't be very good. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that demo because we have a lot of uh, bouncing on the walls and the objects on your bodies and so on. But um, so the cancellation is not going to be as, as good as, as, as uh, to be a good demonstration. But that's the principle. We'll talk about that next, next class.